Hello everyone and welcome to the Drum Circle. Today we're going to be talking about how to use loops and samples in main stage. Now if you are a musician, like a one man band, it's really helpful to be able to play these live because then you can sound like you have a band behind you without all the hassle of having a band. Um, but if you're a drummer like me, maybe you need to play samples to make up for the fact that you cannot play like a lot of these electronic sounds and you're just really trying hard not to get replaced by a drum machine. Now the way most drummers do it these days is they have like an octopad or they have a loop pedal where they just press a button and it plays loops from like Ableton Live. But the thing is is that like I'm only one step above homeless because I'm a college student so I don't have the money for stuff like that because like an octopad is anywhere from like four hundred dollars to nine hundred dollars there's got like ableton live is like four hundred forty dollars and a loop through pedal is like two hundred dollars so i found a way to play loops through main stage and it only cost me around fifty dollars total so the first thing you have to do is go download main stage because it's only thirty bucks on the app store and second just go buy a really cheap midi controller it doesn't matter what it's what it looks like as long as it plugs in your computer and it can control main stage. So the first thing we're going to do is open main stage and I'm going to quickly show you how to use main stage. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete everything because we don't want main stage to hold our hand. We are going to be doing everything from scratch everything okay so the way main stage works is they basically give you a bunch of knobs and dials like this but as of right now none of these pads or dials actually do anything you have to tell it what to do it's basically like a college student or a baby they, they, they have no purpose and they just sit around unless you tell them what to do they're just gonna sit around and like eat your food um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the drum pads we're just gonna get a bunch of stuff out to start with and then we can tell them what to do once everything is all set up so I wanna get some meters to monitor the sounds we're making because I mean you wanna know what's making sound and what's not and if you're supposed to be making sound and it's not coming out you need to know that if you're not supposed to be making sound and you are making sound, it's good to know that because that's probably worse. Um, also, we can get master level fader. We're gonna drag it nice and big. Make sure I'm recording. I am. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to go over to my MIDI. Oh, let me move my pastry. So we're over to my MIDI keyboard over here. And as you can see, I put some tape down and labeled some of the buttons, like one, two, three, four. Those are where those are going to trigger my loops. I know this loop is loop one, this loop is loop two, and so forth. X is a kill switch, just in case every things get out of whack. I can press it and it just mute, mutes everything. And R is going to trigger my reverb, which I'll probably do in like a later video. So first things first, let's make our songs. This is our concert folder. I'm just gonna make like three random songs. We're really gonna do one. So I made some loops for a song called Tremble. It's a song by Mosaic Church. It is a worship song if you don't like worship. Oh well. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to map these pads. And we're going to assign them um, buttons on my MIDI keyboard. So I want this pad to be triggered by my one key or my C3 key. So I'm going to press a sign. I'm going to go over here to my MIDI keyboard, press one, and now, as you can see, the note changed. Now, when I press this key, it turns on that pad. Now, I'm going to make this pad number two. I'm going to go ahead and press two. Now, when I press, now when I press the D key or two, it's going to do that. And then this one, I'm going to make number three. And this one I'm gonna make number four. And then I'm also going to assign my volume fader on my MIDI keyboard 
as the fader on my output. Now this is like what really blows my mind. All I'm gonna do is, or I made sure assign is click, and now I'm just gonna move the fader, and it moves the fader on here. It's, it's insane. The, the, the communication skills at display are incredible. Like, better than my own communication skills. So now we're gonna go. Now what we should do is actually load our loops. So I made these loops in Logic. I just used MIDI draw and just picked a drum machine and made some parts for the song and then I exported those parts as just some wave files. So I'm going to import them here. And this is where Ableton Live kind of is so much better at playing loops than main stage because Ableton Live it kind of pits all your loops you, like it orders them neatly into a list and you can like select them with with great ease but in ma in main stage it's a little clunkier it pits them all into like tracks on a channel strip and then the way you play them back is with with this plugin called playback so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to map these meters so I want this meter to show me when my first pad is playing and so I want this first pad to be tremble kick so what I'm going to do is go down to here where it says unmapped, go to tremble kick, and then click on level. So now it's going to give me the level of tremble kick. I'm going to make this one give me the level of tremble percussion, and then this one the level of the filler pad. And so for these, because these loops are with in tracks within just this song, make sure you have just the song highlighted or else it's going to get mad at you and, and well first of all it's not even going to show your loops to begin with now I want this to map my total output to know if I'm making sound anywhere but to do that because this is like a master and the output works for the entire concert I have to select the whole concert click the output one to two level now it's going to tell me the level of everything that's going on so now going back to tremble. Now what I want to do is I want to map it so that when I press this pad or press one on my keyboard, it actually plays the tremble kick. So I'm going to go to map parameter. I'm going to open up the plugin and I'm literally just going to press play. Oh. See, as you can see, all of them went at the same time. Now, I don't want them to all go at the same time. And the reason they went to go, they went at the same time is because they all have the same group number because I imported them all at the same time. So what I want to do is I don't want them to be in a group at all. I want this to just be on its own. So I'm just going to try that again. Map parameter and press play. Now... Now that the parameter is mapped, when I press this, it should play. Just like that. And then same thing on the keyboard. If I press 1, it should play. Oh. Forgot to put it on loop and play from the start. So. So everything is mapped. And another important thing to do is when you set these up, make sure to sync it. So that way it sets the tempo to whatever the tempo of the song is. And actually the song tempo is 148. So I'm going to change that by going change tempo to 148. And now whenever I play one of my loops, it's going to play at 148. And the brilliant thing about main stage and Logic is that if I were to change the tempo, it would change the tempo of my loops also. And it doesn't change the tune of any of the notes. Everything stays the exact same pitch. It's like, it's crazy. So next what we're going to do is I'm going to map this second button to play my tremble percussion track. And I'm going to go zero group again, I'm gonna, uh, loop it, snap. I'm going to make it snap to the beat, so that way if I'm a little bit off by pressing the button, 
it'll automatically play along to the metronome anyway, so I don't have to have perfect timing. We're going to make it play from the start every time, and we're going to sync it. And yes, now, so click on that on the second pad, which is our D key or number two. We're going to map parameter, and we're going to press play. Now when I press this, click play, let me check on my MIDI keyboard. Everything's working. So and I'm going to do that for the final one over here, which is going to be a sublime pad. I just have like a, I'm pretty sure it's just like a C5 chord on a loop. Because you know, if you're playing live, as soon as the music stops and there's an awkward pause in between songs, for some reason, the crowd thinks that that's the time to start talking and give their feedback. And it's really not. So same thing. Open up the plugin. No group. Start. Snap to the beat. Sync is on. Loop is on. Map parameter. Play. Now let me press the 3 key, and it plays. Okay, so now we have everything basically set up. I'm going to make sure my output is up all the way. All my levels are right.